Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036359 0703 761198 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. mercy upon our homes. God, we ask that you will exercise compassion on our lives now. That as you minister through your servants, that mercy will come upon us in abundance to evoke grace out of us to be able to live lives according to your word. We pray it in Christ's name. Please welcome Brother Gwile. Thank you, sir. We thank God for giving us another opportunity. We are going to be walking through a paper uh, your own copies are going to come before we finish but we cannot wait for them to bring it from town before we start so you will have a paper that we are working through uh, before the end of this session by the grace of God so <clears throat> we walk through this so as to we may not finish it but our intention was that you have a material you can work with that you can refer to uh, when you get back home and at the same time be men that God has put in charge of other lives it might become a resource material that God may want you to make use of in the course of time we are looking at the family clinic uh, and our, our theme is Becoming One in Matrimony. We are going to be dealing with the issue of oneness. And our theme text will be taken from Matthew chapter 19, from verse 4 to 6. And Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 to 25. We shall be drawing these issues as we go ahead. And he said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore, there are no more two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. I will bring the introduction and then Sister Shade will now take on as we discuss. We will be doing it as joint discussion as we go ahead. And then if there are contributions, we will be making. During the last clergy retreat, we introduced the family clinic as an input into the life of the men and women of the clergy. As we studied the word of God, we discovered that God instituted marriage as a means of causing his will to be done here on earth. It is a deliberate help God has made available for the man 
in order for him to fulfill his calling. God himself said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make a help meet for him. And this help that God said he will make was the woman whom God made and brought onto his life. The Bible says, Whoever finds a wife, finds a good thing and has obtained favor from the Lord. This favor from the Lord is what money and riches cannot buy as we read in Proverbs 19 and verse 14. When God wants to favor a man and show him mercy, gives him a wife. She is God's treasure and God's divine investment into the life of the man. It is as they join together that the wholeness, the completeness, and the fullness that God intends for the man is realized and is achievable. God's desire is that the two of them become one flesh in everything they do. God sees them as one and treats them as such. So in this family clinic this year, we shall look very closely into the biblical stand on becoming one flesh and the practicality of it in our relationship as couples both in life and in ministry. We believe that this is the bedrock and this is God's ultimate for our marriages. So as we go ahead this evening, we are going to be looking at the essence of matrimony becoming one flesh. If the two shall not become one, it will not be a marriage. It will not be a marriage. So, Esther Shade will take us on by leading us into looking at becoming one flesh and then we'll be making inputs as we go ahead. Thank you. We are going to read three scriptures as the main text that we shall be discussing this afternoon. We will read Genesis chapter 2, verses 21 to 25. Auntie Gloria, you will please help us with that. We are going to read Matthew 19, verses 4 to 6. And we're going to also read Ephesians 5, verse 31. We'll be going back and forth in these three scriptures to discover and have an understanding about the issue of becoming one flesh in matrimony. Genesis chapter 2, verses 21 to 25. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and while he was sleeping, one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. Matthew 19, 
verses 4 to 6. He answered, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? And said, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. Ephesians 5, 31 and 32. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Um, as a preliminary to our discussion, you will discover that from these three scriptures, the foundation for a sound and healthy and God-glorifying relationship in the home is a thorough understanding of the implication of the two shall become one flesh as the scriptural definition of marriage. In other words, you can define marriage as the male and the female becoming one flesh, the two becoming one flesh. Therefore, we shall discuss here the actual meaning, application and implication of this fact in the Christian home. And maybe before I uh, give the mic over for a further light, you will discover that from the vision scripture we read, it said, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. And I discover that when we get married, there is something God is driving at. First, he is driving at our becoming one. That's the ultimate of marriage. It's not just to have children. We, can, we will have children, but the ultimate that God wants to achieve is that the two of us will become one flesh. And in becoming one flesh, we are going to be exemplifying what should be the relationship between Christ and the church. And being leaders in the body of Christ, God wants our marriages to become samples, specimens, that will show the church what should be their relationship with Christ. While the relationship of Christ with the church is supposed to be the standard that the husband and the wife will be looking at to build their own home, their own relationship. When our relationship goes on and we become one, we are going to prove and manifest to the church how they should relate with Christ who is the, the head of the church, who is the bridegroom of the church. So discussing this issue is not just to have an exercise or just to make you know, a good marriage for ourselves. There is something God wants to achieve. He wants to achieve oneness that we will demonstrate both to the world and to the church what it means to be married and what it means for Christ relating with his church. I would like to hand over the mic to my husband for comments. All right. <clears throat> the first thing that is, is striking, which I wanted to highlight, is that it is not marriage if the two do not become one. By definition, if you take the word marriage, by definition, it is a marrying 
component by component it is a yes that's the right word is a mari a putting together to produce an inseparable one <laughs> eh? yes it's like grafting it's like when you graft uh, you know a plant into another and you glue them to the point that by the time you are coming you cannot see the difference anymore because they have now become one and the fruit that is coming out of this grafting this marriage you cannot particularly say this fruit came from this side or from this side it will be the fruit of the both i don't know whether you are getting that so if it is marriage at all <coughs> biblical marriage is not just staying together biblical marriage is not just having sex with someone and she goes and you come back marriage in god's understanding goes beyond that we're just living together god's intention is that they are no more two so what we're saying is that for example as you see uh, the archbishop and his wife in god's intention he intends that they will no longer be what two that by the time you touch uh, our brother ben you will not go far before you see gloria inside and you cannot separate it and any attempt to separate and say this is for ben this is for gloria you will now be causing a damage that will be irreparable so the lord jesus said what god has doing together let no man do what put it asunder you see the word asunder now it all points at something very deep in my mind you know the word asunder is much more stronger than to separate do you understand that? It means you will need a panasol to do what? To sound it apart. When you are trying to cut wood, if it is useless wood, you don't need panasol. Actually, you don't use the word asunder for something that is useless wood. For example, Look at my Bible here, and I put this on top of this. To separate this from this, you don't use the word asunder. Am I right? Why? Because they are not one, they are just loosely put. But if I really want to use asunder, what do I need to do? Look at this. So if I want to take this junk out of this, what am I going to do now? Aha! That's when you are using the word asunder. You tear with a deliberate force. So marriage in God's intention, and we need to define it now, so that we can understand the perspective in which Jesus is talking about Christian marriage that marriage is such a journey it's a marriage the word marriage actually is like a mathematics word in my mind it's like you take a component here whose second component is here like positive and negative when it finds its own component 
immediately grows and becomes one substance such that if you now want to severe that one substance you must go through another chemical reaction which sometimes is very very difficult so we are praying that as you begin to look at God's intention for Christian home the first definition is that there are, there are no more two they are one they are one and Malachi chapter 2 I would like someone to help us do you have your living Bible here Malachi chapter 2 and if someone could quickly those who carry the old living Bible to help us the man with microphone can you go in and help us Malachi chapter 2 you will read for us verse 14 and 15 from very 13 14 15 there is that man there look at him there will you please stand up sir aha from verse 14 would you say 13 sir 14 why has God abandoned us you know I'll tell you why it is because the Lord has seen your treasure in divorcing your wives who have been faithful to you through the years the companions you promised to care for and keep you were united to your wife by the Lord in God's wise plan in God's wise plan in God's wise plan when you married the two of you became one person in his sight now do you understand this now when you married the two of you became how many persons God sees you as one person actually it is people that sees you and they say eh, this man and that woman whenever God looks at you since you got married what does he see he sees one person so every time a man try to separate from his wife God sees an amputated man you are not hearing me at all eh? every time you and your wife are not one you are a wounded man you have been severely wounded and the wound is such that an essential part of your life was cut and amputated that's how terrible it is to think of marital disharmony because it sees them only as one more thing before i stop it is that because he sees them as one actually they have one name in his presence They have one name. They have only one account. So every time you are drawing your prayer, God only sees one person. He doesn't hear two voices. So whenever you divide voice, which is our simple definition of divorce, what is the meaning of divorce for us in this family clinic? divide voice is that all right and i'm telling you that when you start dividing voice you start dividing force is that okay so every time a man divides voice with his wife god is not hearing anything god there is no clarity and God is saying, no, 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 I'm not hearing what you are saying. So as we go on this afternoon, on that definition, she will lead us furthermore now to look at 
the nitty gritty of ensuring that marriage actually has taken place. I'm afraid that so many people are married, but they are not married. I imagine that some people are married for 10 years and they are still two. They meet together when they want to sleep together. And sometimes, some have put their bed on this side and the other side. And on the day they are going to do some external ceremony, they come together and say, let's do it together. May God help us. It's a wonderful thing that God has done. Um, when he said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make a help meet for him. And verse 23 of that same Genesis chapter 2 says, Adam said, that was when God brought the woman to him. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And as we read Ephesians chapter 5 verse 30. Ephesians 5 verse 30 says, For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. As we go ahead to look at how can these things be? This issue of becoming one flesh. How can two people from different backgrounds married together? How can they become one flesh? We want to look at how it obtained at the beginning to see how God made it at the beginning. Because even in the book of Matthew, Jesus referred us to the beginning. He said, have you not read that he who made them at the beginning made them male and female? He referred us to the beginning that we must constantly and continuously keep reading what obtained at the beginning. Because if you want to know the fake, you need to learn what the original is. A lot of marriages are, are panelated nowadays. There are revised visions, there are versions that many people have made out of marriage. Because there are so many panelbiters who have come around to panelbit the marriage that God instituted. But it's quite unfortunate because that was not how God made it at the beginning. So we want to again refer to the beginning. How God intended that these two shall become one flesh. How did he intend it to be? And as we read verse 23 of Genesis chapter 2, you will discover first of all that Adam woke up from a deep sleep when he expressed this, that this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So it must have been a deep revelation of the Lord for him to have known that what God did to make the woman was to remove a bone from his bones. Because he wasn't aware physically. He was put into a deep sleep, what I call divine anesthesia. He wasn't aware. So how did he know when he woke up? It must have been out of a great understanding and revelation of the Lord to his heart. And to me, I felt we need to pray as we press on that God will reveal our wives to us as the bone of our bones and the flesh of our flesh and reveal our husbands to us as such. Because this matter is not going to come about just by studying alone. If God doesn't reveal this to us, you will keep seeing yourselves 
as individuals, separate individuals. It takes a revelation from the Spirit of the Lord to have this understanding. I want us to keep praying as we go along. So, bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. We are now trying to understand how to become one flesh. This is the first issue we want to deal with. How, 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 what does that mean when it says bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh? What does it mean and what does it imply for those of us now who are married? I thought the official wants to no. no, I want to take and share on that. Um, if you could explain for us a little bit because in the introduction, Brother Willie said she is God's faith treasure and divine investment into the life of a man. This is Babuli now speaking about the woman. And when you said that we need to pray for God to reveal for us who that woman is, I want to put that in, in, in the context of our ministry where I have heard many clergymen over the years have said, but she is ruining my ministry. So how do we reconcile this man who went to sleep and God brought to him this woman and suddenly now she's his ruiner? When she's supposed to be his treasure? Have you? I think we should keep on studying the original. You know, one thing I've learned from the banks, I went to the bank one day to collect money and uh, someone went to get the, to cash the money for me and I just collected it. I was almost going, he said, ah, but let me just wait first because they have not yet put this money into their you know, they have not, they have just brought it from town. They want to check it. And I looked at it and said, this is good money. There is nothing wrong with it. He said, let me, let me check. And she went and came back. And more than, almost 10 of the currency was sick. I said, how did you know? I discovered that these bank people study the original currency into details. So that by the time you bring the fake and with their special light, they will be able to detect the fake. When we study the original first, then we will see where we went wrong by calling our wives the one who ruined our ministry. Let's see how God intended it to be at the beginning. And God helping us, we will see our mistakes. And God is going to correct us in the name of Jesus. Uh, now, <clears throat> I thought there was a question that you began to raise. The question of revelation. The question of how do you see your wife? And it looks to me as if right from that Genesis chapter 2, there was a revelation. And I was going to say that many, many times husbands, we have not allowed God to reveal our wives to us. I'm not talking about revealing the woman to marry. I'm talking about this woman that you have married. You've not caught a revelation of who she is to you. And unless God begins to give our understanding that, look, this woman is not just another woman. You see, what touched me was that they have brought many animals. Adam to see what you will call them. And honestly, the Bible said there was not found 
any of those animals suitable for him. Which means, even when people are pretending to fall in love with their dog, eh? or that they are great friends with their cat, and you see them kissing the, the cat, when you go to the root of this, it's because there is a terrible disorder in their lives. They are so lonely in life that the dog has become their companion. If you see them discussing with the dog, you will think that they are doing something, but it's an aberration. God has never made a dog or a pet to fit into our lives. God will help us to note that. But what the first thing we are noting is that when you woke up from sleep, there was a revelation of this woman to him. And we are praying that for our marriages to produce the kind of thing that God is looking for, it will be important that we begin by saying to God, who is this wife that you have given me? Because when, she, when he said, she eats the bone of my bones. Now, I don't know how to put it, but I wish we can do a little study of the preposition of. What is the meaning of the word of as a preposition? The word, you, you use the word of as if this is the offspring. Isn't it? As if this is part of. I don't know whether is it coming out clear. It's part of. So when the man woke up and saw the woman, he didn't see a separate entity. Did you see what he saw? He saw an extension of himself. I don't know whether you can see that. He saw that, ah, this woman actually is out of me. I do, do, do you understand now? As if what I am essentially part of me is this. And I'm always wanting to know why Genesis 2.23 So Adam said this now is the bone of my bones. Bone of my bones. Not bone with my bones. The preposition is of, not with. Will anybody help us very quickly in the congregation to differentiate between of and with? Yes, sir. Please bring the mic to Baba here. We are looking at the difference between with and of. Now actually when you say um, of, something from an existing entity, alright? Something from an existing entity. Something from an existing entity. Oh, we must give Baba a clap for that. Because <laughs> that is spot on. Yes, sir. But when you say with, it means there is an entity, there is an, uh, another entity, and these two entities are different. You may not take a part of one to the other one, you are making a different thing completely. Hmm. Two different entities. So something with expands but doesn't make them the same thing. Hmm. It's just like in, um, in science. Now you know, uh, you have an atom, another atom, you form a compound. 
you, you follow yes. so it, it will something it is just uh, something to enlarge another thing not to make one thing the same the same thing hmm. praise the lord are we getting something from what baba is saying here the word of is saying this is just but a sample from the same entity but when you use the word with these are two different substances that are not of the same source that you are only bringing together as an addition do you, do you understand that now but when you use the word of you are saying this is from the same entity the same substance so actually when you bring it are you getting me when you bring it what you will discover that they just naturally combine isn't it and join but when you bring from a different entity a different substance even if you mix them there is still a trace of what of separatedness of different they are not the same so we are talking about same when we use the word of i think did you follow what baba said do you agree with our definition or you have something else to say about of and with so when you look at that scripture it says this is the bone of that is the bone out of my bones so actually when shade comes she has not come to a strange place where has she come she has come into what and where she originally belonged oh my god are we getting that now that as she comes here now she has only become she has only found the components where she was made of is complete do you understand that now and much more when you look at the way the word of god actually put it he said when god made the man to sleep god took from him a rib and he covered it with the flesh so on the outside you will think that that man is what is complete but actually part of him is missing may the lord help you to understand this part of him is missing but the miracle we have seen is that and the bible says look at what the bible says in verse 22 <coughs> can you please look at verse 22 verse 22 of genesis chapter 2 let's quickly check this because if this is what jesus referred to at the beginning in matthew 19 and if this is what ephesians chapter 5 also referred to as the reason why the husband must be one flesh with his wife then we need to understand it very well verse 22 and the rib and the rib excuse me if they have used an a rib what would that have meant it can be any rib from anywhere but god was very deliberate what did he say and the rib and honestly speaking if anybody just came to you and said and the boy what will be your immediate question which boy and ever before god 
we keep quiet for us to ask him the question which rib he answered it immediately in verse 22 can you see it all of you can you see it he said and the rib which the lord god had taken from man the rib so when we look at uh, our archbishop there now honestly speaking he looks complete in our eyes isn't it until glory came am i correct there was a loophole but covered neatly by the flesh and i wonder why god covered it so that wrong things will not feel it shout hallelujah somebody. yes now you see god was so wonderful that he didn't expose our loophole he did it because he had your wife in mind do you understand that now there are many things in your life that is not complete but nobody knows in fact when you stand up and you are preaching and you are doing your hand like that and say hallelujah so many many women in the church they just think that this is a perfect man it's only when your wife came in that she met the biggest surprise of her life some women they said if i had knew you are like this <laughs> but you see you didn't know because god was deliberately covering it for you to come hallelujah which read the read the lord god had taken from man made you a woman and brought her unto the man i think the more we study this scripture the more i see the mystery so what i'm seeing is that shade for example wherever she had been kept where they were making her are you getting that now it was something that was taken out of me taken out of me whatever effort i was making to make it up no way they said don't worry you will never be complete until she comes wait until we bring her and do you know that as we were going up and down here and there here and there trying to be a big man there there is that thing inside and god covered it so that strange people strange things strange uh, uh, women don't enter it so when god finish making it making the rib into a woman never you mind all the facial appearance are you understanding never you mind that maybe she's uh, dark or black that is that is wrapping paper 